Last time on just to see how far it is. I feel like I am on the set of The Martian. You couldn't find a more dramatic location than this. But as you see the sign behind me, Rimfuss Mark is just this way and apparently there's a hot spring as well. So we're going to go and spring into a hot spring like you need to. Just water here turns into steam. Crazy landscape. Another first. Wow. That's a piece of metal. Stupid. Should have taken the side awning down. I mean, there was a chance of rain maybe later this afternoon in three or four hours. Didn't even think. So a rookie mistake on our part because that is absolutely trashed. Honestly, been so weird coming back into, uh, I guess what you'd call civilization, a uh, big city, just um, diverted to Bloom. I mean, I was never planning on coming to Bloom, but um, my good friend and cameraman Jonathan Crawford, who's been with me since uh, probably like the fifth or sixth um, day on the trip, uh, documenting all the awesome drone footage and doing some filming for us. He's got to get back onto another job, so we've pulled our trip through from um, Orania to get to Bloemfontein so we could drop him off this morning. Uh, and it's weird, it's, it's just weird being back on national roads, um, it's weird being back in the city, there's that Russian intensity, so it's been a bit of a, a, bit of a shell shock and a change I suppose. Um, and also, you know, I'm so aware of masks and everything because you, you're back in civilization, it's just, it's been weird. Um, going to sit today. We found a really, really cool um, uh, little farm that we're staying in just outside uh, outside Bloom and I've decided to spend another night just to sit there, regroup and plan where to from here because we've essentially got about five days left. It was time to regroup, take stock and freshen up. Today, I've decided, is uh, time to clean Susie day. We're never gonna clean the outside because the dirt that's caked on her is only gonna be washed off by rain or thunderstorms. But uh, every little ounce of mud and grit and grime tells a story of the places we've been to and our adventure. So that's, um, that's gonna be staying, but the inside, is a mess. So even though I've got a little dog cover that, um, that keeps the dogs inside the vehicle and kind of minimizes their mess, we've been on the road for 20, 24 days now. So yeah, dirt does get accumulated. And Oscar, he, um, yeah, this is his new home. So the minute I open a car door, he's in. Come Oscar, out boy, come. Out, out, out. Come, dad's got to clean. Come boy, dad's got to clean. Jump down, jump down. Good boy. Good boy, it's going to be nice to get into a clean car and hit the road again tomorrow. Cheers to having a bath. Last time I had one was uh, elephant hide 20 days ago. Amazing. But how stoked am I with this place that we found? Actually on Airbnb, Geluk Farm Cottages, and ek is baie geluk a gerete bad en hulle het wijn. Perfect.
but it wouldn't be a peaceful night for the hunted. <laughs> Refreshed after a wonderful two day recharge, it was back on the road and life returned back to normal for the Geluk farm locals. have you done this just headed out and found a nice place and thought hey that looks like a great spot for lunch this little road I drive past so often past Karip Dam maybe I stop to take a quick photograph and, and off I go so cool just to take time out make a lunch I mean you can't get a restaurant with a better view than this thought about the trip today uh, we're heading down to Richmond knew we'd pass Karip so it's something that you want to cook that is going to be quick and easy and not make much mess and gnocchi you can't cock it up honestly boil some water when it floats it's ready jam in some pesto sauce and um, some chopped up fresh tomato as well and voila you've got a meal that is tasty and packed full of energy which is great for when you uh, are on the road and need to eat on the run so lovely check out that view too good I must admit it's been uh, pretty strange commuting like I normally do uh, on a national road and just tunnel vision heading for my destination. Uh, we haven't been doing that for so many days but this really is the only way for us to get from Bloemfontein to Richmond is on the N1. Uh, why am I going to Richmond? Well it's an interesting story in itself. Uh, a couple of months back um, one of my followers on social media, Lionel, um, suggested that I come and check out uh, Richmond in the Northern Cape, said what a beautiful place it is. We were speaking around maybe coming and test driving cars and, and, and coming to check them out. They run a, a really cool hotel there. Uh, and then when obviously just to see how far it is, the planning phase started happening. I messaged him and said, listen, this could be the perfect opportunity to get to come and visit you guys. So we're heading there. I don't know much about the town at all, but it seems like it's becoming quite a popular stopover for people on the commute from Joburg to Cape Town. Instead of doing Colesburg, they'd rather go and stay in a very cool little uh, northern Cape Town. So I'm um, looking forward to see what Richmond has to deliver. Accommodation for the night was just outside of town at Stilavatis, another truly authentic farm stay. What's the first thing you do when you arrive in a new town? You find a place to grab coffee because guaranteed you're going to get the inside story on a town. That's exactly what I did here in Richmond. Popped in at uh, Fet Mace. Great cake, great coffee. A um, lot of stories about the church behind us. Um, so we're going to come and explore tomorrow. But uh, happy to be in Richmond. It looks like a really cool town. I've seen a lot of signs saying bookshop, bookstore, books, books, books. Apparently it is the only official book town uh, in South Africa. How do you know you're in a small town? Well, when it goes five o'clock and there's no one around, literally, streets are dead, <laughs> shops all closed. It's a bit disconcerting, I guess, if you're coming from a city, but I think it's so charming because everyone goes home 
they have a life to enjoy. I think it's brilliant. Well, this used to be the old ladies' lounge because they went to live in the bar. So yeah, this is where they come in. Yeah. Do you think they want to detect? Yeah. Cheers. Really cool. Yeah. Great to meet you guys. Very Thank nice you. Meet you. Absolutely. Nice and well, thanks for Cheers the hospitality. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. No. It's, uh, it's a good thing for the town. Man. It's good to be it's in Richmond. Uh, it's good to have you in. Now, like myself, Aubrey and Lionel had never been to the town of Richmond, but on their first visit, they fell in love with the old building that used to be the town hotel. Having owned B&Bs in Johannesburg, it was an opportunity to escape the rat race and establish themselves here. So in 2019, they packed up their stuff and relocated. Now, with little to no money to renovate, it became a real hands-on labor of love, transforming the old building room by room breathing new life into the property with their unique style and taste. And it wasn't just a lick of paint that was needed, but a complete overall, and the transformation is incredible. Now, it was during lockdown that they started a new venture. And that's where, that's where the debate business started, yeah. which is like, that's just mind blowing. Whose idea was that? Yours? Well, he's the brains behind it. <laughs> I'm the good one. Are, you, are, you, are you, you front of ours? <laughs> but they're special. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because we're the only ones in the entire country that make it like this. Actually, in the entire world. So you're using wool. Carded, uh, it's called carded wool. So it's been scoured, washed, um, all vegetable mats are taken out. And then it goes through a, these big machines that have got these drums. And it puts all of the fibers into one direction. Okay. Um, and it comes in those long ropes. But then you, I mean, I look at the stuff you're doing now, I mean, they basically look cool. It's like patchwork, it's all yeah. quilts. So to give you an idea, there's 130 blocks in a super can do that. There's 130 blocks that have to be sized and weighed. Jeez, like That's one individually way. packed into these Individually packed Please, these these sandwiches. Everything here is completely handmade. He does I, all the sewing. I do all the sewing. Every single stitch that goes into those duvets. Are you, are you still alive? <laughs> Hey? I've got industrial machines. No, no, because I mean, you were telling me at the beginning you were using like a little Elmer's knife machine. Yeah, <laughs> yes, it was, it was exactly that. It was an imbecile. Yeah. I mean, that thing does maybe. And it was a, literally yeah, smoking at the 150 end of the day. stitches a minute. Like, da 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 da. And that's sort of how we started. So people can now book online and you guys will ship and send it out from here, so yep. no problem. Yeah, yeah. exactly. But that's you were saying right. to me as well, I mean, the health benefits with sleeping on wool. It's not like. It's not like a down duvet or a plastic duvet where it creates this like Dutch oven around you. Yeah. Um, and there's no hot spots. There's, yeah, there's no hot spots. So when, when you sweat, the, the wool actually wicks the, the, the moisture away from the body and it actually evaporates. Okay. Um, it keeps your body at, a, at a, an optimal temperature for longer. So it but means your, your sleep is actually better. You were telling me earlier the menopausal woman go, <laughs> go nuts for this. They love, them. Lady. They love, they love the duvets. The duvets. They, they, don't, don't, they don't get those power surges. Yeah. And, power, um, a power surge. <laughs> and and I, I, hopefully we actually save a few marriages because um, they say yeah, that... What yeah, was that one chick? Um, she said, I sleep cold, my husband sleeps hot. And we... We can't sleep in the same bed anymore because he gets hot, I get cold, and we can't sleep under the same You don't think bed. that's an excuse on his part? <laughs> <laughs> and she says they're now sleeping in the same bed because the duvet doesn't make them hot. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah, it's an investment. It is. And the, th the thing with wool, you it'll last yeah. you a lifetime. Yeah. yeah. Down one. But wool will, because it doesn't deteriorate. It's just the most amazing and it's, fiber. It's not cruel to animals. It's not cruel to animals. <laughs> Uh, well, I can see animal animal lovers. I mean, like, <laughs> you know, we we cruising with our dogs, and you've got a whole flipping Manon petting zoo. zoo yeah, yes. there's, uh, and, and, and the name is my best, Knuckles. Yes. I mean, just have a look at Knuckle Buster. <laughs> Sir Knuckles of Richmond. Hello, kitty. Hello, Knuckles. Hello. Oh, look at you. And hello, hello. What's happening? What's happening? Hello. Hello. Come here. Come cuties. Hello. Oh, you're so precious, eh? She's like I am 
in food heaven. I can understand why the place is called Fet Mace. I mean, any mouse living here is going to be fat. A proper farm breakfast. No freshly baked little farm bread. Uh, tomato and, um, and mushroom cheese. And you drop that little relish. That is yum. Mm. The little things. Happy. You are a talented man. Thanks a lot. How long have you been expressing yourself in art? Uh, professionally, let me say, seven years. And where are you from? I'm from Tata. I was born in Tata, the Eastern Cape. And then I studied art in Johannesburg. And what are you doing in Richmond? Are you, do you live here now or are you just here for artistic inspiration? For both. <laughs> I've been here for about five months now. The idea was that I'm part of the Richmond bookbinding project. They've been busy creating like this project, which makes books of uh, recycled materials, potato bags, uh, sugar bags, and, and maize meal. And then they make like these interesting books. So the idea that Abri wanted was like a person that can share like the basics of art with the ladies and they brought in the printing press as a printmaker so, and uh, I did lino cut so it was like easy for me to get that working. And how long does that book stay in the press? Not for long, just out and in and out. Okay. So just, just let the glue get against it. After you take it out there, you just put it on a weight like this. Show me that side, so that's what it's... Unbelievable. <laughs> Everything recycled, reused. Yes. What is that? Japanese stay binding. So you do all of that by hand? Yes. Got to be patient, eh? <laughs> How many holes in your fingers? No, nothing. Nothing? She's, I would be bleeding. <laughs> it's amazing. I'm also part of the Spear Arts uh, Trust yeah. mentorship yeah. program, which is called the Creative Blog. So now I'm making these blogs. Then when I'm done working on this, I submit, like at the moment we submit online, and then they give us like a very constructive crit on how to, to develop our works and push it further. And this artwork is titled uh, Temu Road, Nangelizo location. Yeah. Nangelizo. So I'm from Nangelizo in the Eastern Cape. So this is the Temu Road, if you can like see. The road that people used to go to town and wherever, out of the, the Nangelizo location. Mm -hmm. So like I used like this as a metaphor of showing like a and reminiscing of the time like when I when you were home. growing up yes and when i went home left home to to job to study art to to pursue my so journey. that's actually your journey that's from journey. home to the end point yes to to like everything that's happening it's amazing i've said a few times on this trip now that all of these little towns that we go to all have unbelievable stories to tell and a little signboard on the side of the road is your opportunity to turn off and discover a hidden gem and that's what we've done in richmond and i'm absolutely blown away this is the last place you expect to find a modern art gallery and a collection like this mapsa is something that is absolutely mind-blowing and if it's not the fact that you want to come to a book town they've got their own book festival that they have here every year you want to come and expose yourself and immerse yourself in modern art richmond can offer that as well i am absolutely surprised by what this town has delivered All too soon it was time to get back on the road again.
day 26 of our incredible 30 day adventure. Now I can't actually believe that home is literally just down the road. But then again, just like the tortoise, we too are carrying our home on our backs. I'm honestly loving these stories of city slickers that have decided enough is enough and are looking for a quieter, better quality of life, but bringing their own passion and energy to these small towns. And the small towns are welcoming um, the newcomers in because it's good for business, it's good for developing the town as well. And that's exactly what we discovered here in Richmond. Um, been great hanging out with Lahanel and Aubrey. Um, I packed a pair of jeans at the beginning of the trip and a collared shirt, haven't worn it once. So it was quite nice to dress up uh, for dinner and just to sit back and, and, and relax and, and wine and dine haven't done that at all so it was a really fantastic treat but the town has really impressed me I mean we haven't got a chance to see everything uh, the museum is apparently really really something special but just ran out of time so Richmond thank you it's been amazing now for the really centric and I don't want to just discover the Isle House New Bethesda I drove through well wow, maybe when I was 18 so a long long time ago looking forward to staying there and finding out why this town has become so popular So beautiful, settling in under a setting sun and feeling very much at home. Is that nice boy? Is that nice? You mad thing. Hello Mila Moo. Hello Mila baby girl. Hello. Where have you been? Wait. Where have you been? Yeah. Did you go for a walk? What did you do? Hello my baby. Are oh, you cute? Where's your ball? Where's your ball? You better go find it. And so important to meet the neighbors. Hello, my girl. What you doing? What you doing? Okay, you're gonna stay there. We're coming now. Okay. Be good. Be good, my baby. Dad'll see you now. Andre, that looks Amazing. Good. You have uh, an award-winning Italian restaurant in New Bethesda. How the hell does that happen? Easy. Good food. <laughs> Where are you from? What's the, what's the story? Because I mean, I Victoria? find it fascinating. How, and how long have you been here? Two years. Why here? What did I say to you? Sudden rush of blood to the head. Yeah. <laughs> you said you were doing a designing architect. I was an architect for 40 years, yeah. And never before been involved in restaurants? I um, love passion for food, but not, no. Because that's a brave move. So from <laughs> Pretoria to New Bethesda. But is it only busy December time? With the Alas, uh, it's got a fairly steady flow of, of, of tourists. Local, international? What's mainly, the mix? Mainly in local at the moment. But before lockdown, a lot of international. A lot of local people said they always raced past. Yeah. And, uh, and they've now decided to pop into New Bethesda. Yeah. And they coming back. Some people have been here since lockdown, been here twice already. Amazing, eh? Yeah. I loved what you said to me when you drove into town, you just knew. Yeah. There is something quite special that driving. I stopped at the first stop street and there were three horses walking across the road and I had to wait for them. <laughs> it's not a zebra crossing, it's a horse crossing. <laughs> horse crossing. <laughs> I'm gonna let you finish your basil pesto pasta. I'm gonna smash a pizza. Awesome, nice to meet you, Andrew. Yeah, thanks. Nice to Very meet cool. you. Very <laughs> cool.
So are you the master? Yes, I'm the master chef. <laughs> and, he's, and he's the student? He's the student. Where did you learn how to make a perfect pizza? Right here in the Bethesda. What makes a perfect pizza? Sum it up. Uh, the love of it. That's the Italian way. That's the Italian way. We've got our snowmaster fridge packed full of meat with all the good intentions of cooking on our stay here. Well, that's gone out the window. We came to try the pizza and the pasta and it is proper, proper well. The best pizza in the Karoo, they say, and they're not wrong. Thank you to every single one of you who suggested that Beauty Festa has to be on my list of places to visit. Just driving into town, you go, something special here. So we made a call to stay for two nights. I think it's just too much to discover. Um, will I be cooking tomorrow night? <laughs> Probably not. Mm. It's good. A new day filled with new adventures. A definite spring in my step after last night's great start. How long have you been here? Ten years. Yeah. And, and why, why, why yeah? It's awesome. <laughs> no, you know what I mean? It's like I always find that fascinating. You come from Cape Town, hustle and bustle, and now you find yourself in a small town. There's a change in mindset to live in a place like total, this. Total, total. But I, I mean, I could never be back in the city, actually. Yeah. You want to retain what it is, but as it becomes more and more popular and access becomes easier with tarred roads, you kind of lose the essence of New Bethesda. Isn't that always the fine balance? That is a worry, but people are strongly against it in the town, which is quite awesome. So we are, as far as I'm concerned, never tarred roads, street lights. We do want tourism. Yes. I mean, I realize with lockdown, we actually need the tourists, you know? Like, really, we do. Yeah. But I think we're still manageable enough not to. That's oh, amazing. Blown away. Yeah. Do we call you the mayor of New Bethesda? No. I mean, you've been here how long? We've been here, what, 21 years, 22 years. Takes a special mindset to, to live in a small town. Because how many people are here? Uh, about 1,500 altogether. Wow. So what was it about driving into New Bethesda that made you say, this is a place that I'm not leaving? Well, we were looking for somewhere in the Karoo, and then we didn't, didn't actually know about the village in New Bethesda. But somebody had told us about the Alas, so we came to see the Alas and found the village and thought we could come here and make a living here. To be here for 21 years, what all have you done? Well, we came and started the Backpackers and kind of thought that we could make a go of it. And we just grew from there. But there's more here to do and see than just the Alas. Yeah, the Alas is probably the main guidebook attraction and, and what brings a lot of people here the first time. But people come back for other stuff, like the Karoo, the wide open spaces, the unspoiled village. Um, things like that that bring people back. Um, a lot of people head over to Spain and everywhere else to go and do the Camino, but I see like going and doing the walks in the village is quite popular. Yeah, and we just be sort of below the Campusburg, which is the highest freestanding peak in, in, the, in the country apparently. Story on the graveyard, and it's going back what 1700s? Yeah, there's graves. You, you can still read some inscriptions on old stones from the 1700s. And who, who are those people? Do we know? Not really. I mean, the, the records are poor. But who, I mean, they're obviously South Africans. Yeah. Are we, Local in terms of inhabitants, or would they have been Afrikaners? I don't, I don't or? really know. I mean, they were, you know, the, the village, the, the, the town was established, the, the, the church was established about 150 years ago, just a bit less. But, um, and the, but there's graves that are older than that. So obviously, we're, we're, we're trek or stuff around yeah. here. There's a lot of water in, in this area. Often, it's the fourth oldest declared town in South Africa, yeah. and it's because of the water. Yeah, because you can see, even when we drive through, I mean, the riverbeds are dry, but it's green. You've got the weeping willow, so you can see there's obviously a lot of, a lot of natural water. There's a risk that you lose the essence of, of New Bethesda with the development said so there's some big value houses being built in the area. How, how, do, how do you hang on to that? It's difficult, you know, I mean, I, I think what saves us is some, to some extent is our distance from the big centres like Hunting and, and, and the West and Cape Town. Um, yeah, we're more than four hours, we're not a weekend market for the big centres. Yeah. We're very, very seasonal. I mean, basically, I mean, most of our market is, yeah, 70% of the market is, is South African market. And that's school weekends and yeah. school holidays on weekends. But that's quite cool. A lot of our story now through COVID and lockdown that it's been in our traditional quiet season anyway. But a lot of the other places rely on international tourists. I think we've been quite lucky. I mean, the last two months, I mean, September, October have been better than last year, September, October. Amazing. And people are trying to, people are, it's, they feel safer in the open. I think people want to get out now. You're not congested, you're not in cities, you're socially distancing by default. Yeah. 
rare to see a car go by. Normally it's horses galloping. And who do they belong to? The guys in the, the, the locals. And they, because you can see they're in good nick and they just yeah. cruise around the town. Uh, for us, pet friendly is always something we're trying to find and that's what it feels like. Everything here is totally geared towards yeah. being pet friendly. Hello, hello. My chef legends, pizza masters. It's amazing how far man will walk for cold beer. It's a lot further than we thought. That is what's cool in uh, New Bethesda. Cars been parked, Susie's been having a rest, and we've been walking everywhere. Um, yeah, keen to try their local craft beer. Yum, yum, yum. It's called Stuburg. 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 Okay, yes. for the mountain. Okay. For the mountain. Okay. And how long have you been doing this? Uh, 2003, the, the brewery opened. Very, yeah. very cool. Yeah. What have you got? So there's, there's the Karoo Ale, which is more on the bitter side. There's a Honey Ale, slightly sweeter. And then there's a Karoo Pale Ale, it's got more hops in, slightly fruitier. And then we also do Apple Cider if you don't do beer. And everything brewed here? Yeah. yeah. So basically I've got, I've got a 200 litre boiler. And then you all your, your malt and your hops and everything goes in there. And then I have an immersion chiller. This chiller gets popped into the, into the, into the boiler. And then you just circulate cold water through this, like a little heat extractor. Yeah. And then once the beer is on fermentation temperature, this with a pipe goes through a hole in the wall there. And that and goes, goes into, into the fermenting room, and that's where our, and that's where our ferment the beer that side. Now, how long does that the fermentation process? How long does that take? So like three or four days in summer, but in winter it can be like two or three weeks because okay. it's, it's so cold that the yeast isn't as active as it is now. All right. So look how quickly now. So what I'm busy doing there now at the moment is. I'm transferring the beer from the primary fermenter into the secondary fermenter to get it to clear up a bit and then I take the beer off the top of that again. And so how did you figure from... this whole thing out? No, I've been brewing for years since before I moved here. So yeah, I've been always, been, always brewed beer. I bet the Oaks would have been wanting this setup for lockdown, eh? <laughs> yeah, it's worked well in lockdown. That looks awesome. Do me a favor, I know the, the buffalo rule and also know the double parked rule. But I'm double parked for one reason only is that I'm sampling the different beers here. So I've got a pale ale and I've got their like a honey ale. Both are really, really good. Um, there's the cider that I've still got to try. Thank goodness we've got a long walk because I think that's, what's, <laughs> that's what I'm going to need after this. No cars to run over here, I just got to watch for the wild horses. Cheers, New Bethesda, amazing, eh? Cheers. Perfect time to contemplate the next part of our trip, which I think is um, going to be Hogsback. It's nearly over. I think two more nights. It's going to be quite sad when it's all done. It's been amazing, I'm sure. Places we've seen and the people we've met and the stories we've got to tell. I think we've got to do it again. What do you think? Next time on Just to See How Far It Is. You know when you look through um, overlanding catalogues and they try and sell you on this lifestyle. This is uh, <laughs> the centerfold. You, you can't you can't beat this. Can't believe it's uh, it's the last night. <laughs> Jeez, it's gone by so quickly and uh, been very reflective. It just seems appropriate that we've got a little fire going. Yeah, it's been special. It's been really, really cool. Bum bum bum